All right. Hi, everybody. Um, while people are filtering in, I'm just going to give it all a few minutes. Thank you so much for your patience as we got a little bit of a late start today. Um, we've got people coming in from all over. We usually have quite an international audience. So as you um, come in, feel free to chime in the chat and just say where you're coming from. I am coming from today, very sunny San Francisco um, from the Letterform archive. I'm not actually physically in the archive, but this is our old archive behind me. Let's see. So as people are filtering in, I'm going to give just a little bit of an introduction to Letterform Archive itself. So I think we've got a lot of people still coming in, but just saying, hi, I'm Sarah, Sarah Getz. Um, Sarah rhymes with stare or there. I use they, them pronouns, and I am the guest experience coordinator at the Letterform Archive. So like I've said earlier, as people are filtering in, we usually have quite an international audience. So please jump in the chat, tell us where you're coming from. We love to see um, the, the lengths that people go um, to, to see stuff about cool materials. Cool, we've got some people from, well, Berkeley, hi neighbor. Um, <laughs> um, Michigan, Portugal, Chicago, Reno, love y'all. Okay, cool. So folks will continue to trickle in for a little bit, but meanwhile, I'd like to let y'all know some of the things that are happening in the next month or so here at Letterform Archive. So this is a live with the archive live with the archive um, event, which is when we bring in special guests from, from outside of the area usually. We have a um, educational program called Type West. Um, that is a postgraduate certificate program in type, typeface design with public workshops and lectures. We have quite a few of those lectures coming up now, but I wanted to give a sort of like urgency plug for the fact that our deadline to join this certificate program is um, October 31st um, at 11.59 p.m. So before the stroke of midnight on Halloween, we want to see your applications. There are some scholarship opportunities um, uh, for POC folks. Um, please find out more at letarc.org slash education. Um, like I said, we'd love to see your applications. And the really exciting thing for us this year is that everything is going to be happening online. So this is gonna be a worldwide classroom scenario. Um, so we just really can't wait to see what people come up with. And um, we also have more access than usual for some of the, some amazing instructors from all over the place. So, some of that programming that I was mentioning, um, there is a letter form lecture coming up on Tuesday. That's next Tuesday. Or sorry, is that next Tuesday? Oh my gosh, Tuesday, November 3rd, um, where all of us in the US are gonna be, you know, hanging on to sanity by the skins of our teeth. Um, but on this day, just to like keep you nice and distracted if you're sitting here and anxious. Um, oh wait, I think I, got you to the wrong one. So this one is next Tuesday. We've got design through um, 125 years of pin back buttons uh, presented to us by uh, Kristen Carter. So Kristen Carter is the Busy Beaver Button Company founder and will examine how illustration and lettering affect the overall design and message of the button. Kristen will show some original artwork as well as the as well as finished buttons and also touch on the commercial printing styles over um, over the last um, 125 years. So some of like the most famous pinback buttons that we know of are also election related. So who knows? We might see a I like I type um, button in this talk. It's going to be great. Then. Um, Two weeks after that, we've got uh, Juan Luis Blanco, who will be dealing with the original inscription sources of Basque letters. 
how they're drawn, um, the materials that they're drawn from, why they evolved the way they did. It's going to be an exploration of the historical, social, and political context in which the phenomenon of Basque letters flourished and to help us understand that. And then we'll um, analyze past and present uses and trends and see how they informed and informed the design of Hari, which uh, Juan Luis Blanco um, invented. So before I turn it over, so you can learn more at uh, letarc.org slash events. Before I turn it over to the folks from CCA, I just wanted to take a moment to share a few links. You should see them in the chat where you can donate to bail funds um, to those in Philly protesting, um, Philadelphia, protesting the murder of Walter Wallace Jr. So check those out. Um, try to keep the community for Black Lives Matter alive. All right. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Catherine, who's going to talk a little bit about um, how this exhibition at CCA got started and um, introduce our wonderful guest, Gato Negro. Hi, thank you, Sarah. I'm going to put a link in the chat for people to go to the website. Okay. So yeah, my name is Catherine and I have the immense pleasure of introducing Leon Munoz Santini and Andrea Garcia Flores of Mexico City based publishing house Gato Negro. I was a co-curator of this online exhibition, a book like a fist, Gato Negro's grammar of radicality along with my fellow masters of curatorial practice student at CCA, Emily Marquert, who's also on the call with us today. The exhibition was designed by Danielle Kim with the indispensable help of Chris Tamamoto. Gato Negro have been publishing foundational and contemporary radical texts since their inception in 2013. With a mandate to do the least amount of design possible, Gato Negro's uncomplicated design lets the text speak for themselves and accelerate the publishing process. As Emily and I spent more time with Gato Negro's designs in the spring, we began questioning how one might make an appropriate space for such transparent design um, in an exhibition form. When graphic design can speak louder than words in an era of radical resistance on a global stage, what does it mean to only use essential design elements? Where is a nearly transparent graphic language placed in the long history of graphic design as a form of resistance? The title of the exhibition, A Book Like a Fist, points to something Leon said in response to me asking him about why Gato Negro publishes so many manifestos. Leon explained that manifestos see words as a tool one can use to fight. We've seen this happen since printing and publishing tools and materials were made available um, to the masses. If you navigate to the exhibition, you'll find a section called history, which Emily researched tirelessly. This section provides the viewer with a history of graphic resistance, a history of using graphic language to make the needs of the masses heard and speak truth to power. From Martin Luther's 95 theses, Oops. From Martin Luther's 95 Theses to posters from the Black Panther Party to Gato Negro's own recent publication, Chile 2019, again and again, graphic design has been used to create a unique grammar of radicality. Taking these historic examples together, you can see why Gato Negro's decision to do the least amount of design possible and let the text speak for themselves is in fact quite radical. It is through the lens of history that we saw Gato Negro's work as also revolutionary. And the two members of Gato Negro that you'll be hearing from today are Leon Munoz Santini and Andrea Garcia Flores. So Leon Munoz Santini, Munoz Santini is a self-taught designer and publisher and photographer and has developed his career mainly in the area of editorial design and especially in the fields of children's literature, um, literature in general, social design and photography, working for various institutions in Mexico and abroad. His work has won several awards, among them New Horizons Bologna in both 2009 and 2013, and the AIGA's 50 books, 50 various editorial covers in 2009. Santini is the author of several books, including Horizontales y Verticales in 2012 and Satan in 2017. 
In 2013, he founded the independent and anti-authoritarian publishing project Gato Negro Ediciones, which pushes the boundaries of what the book format and the editorial language can deliver. Since 2017, he's a member of the Alliance Graphique Internationale, otherwise known as AGI. Andrea is a graphic designer, photographer, and illustrator. She is a partner and editorial design coordinator in Gato Negro Ediciones since 2013, where she has published books such as Meow, Enrique, Donald, The Life Plant Cycle Starts All Over Again, and Rebecca. She develops projects as an editorial designer and illustrator for various institutions in Mexico. In recent years, she is working with subjects related to photography, gender, and eroticism. She is also starting Meow Ediciones, a publishing project in the making that is a spin off of Gato Negro Ediciones. The independent feminist publishing program will be working primarily with female artists, writers, illustrators, editors, and creators with the intention of reducing the gender gap in the editorial scene and amplifying these voices. And with that, please join me in welcoming Andrea and Leon of Gato Negro. <laughs> Hello, thank you for coming. Everyone on the chat and in the rest of the world. <laughs> um, <clears throat> please do start, Andrea. Okay, so, well, first of all, thank you to Letterform Archive and um, to CCA for this amazing opportunity for us to speak in about the exhibition and our work. We are really happy about that opportunity. Um, we have selected, I, I don't know uh, what like the right way to start this conversation, Leon. Maybe we should start to talk about how was the main idea, the, the first idea with this exhibition and then we can jump into the specific cases of design. We can, you know, like link. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, yes. Uh, once again, uh, thanks to, uh, to all the people who made this possible, especially to Chris Hamamoto, who was the link to make this possible. Um, Maybe he's watching us. Hi, Chris. Uh, and, um, <laughs> well, uh, and thanks, Catherine, uh, for, for, for your words. Um, um, <clears throat> I just said we, we started this project uh, like uh, five, six, seven years ago. Um, and uh, everything that happened uh, with this has been uh, a learning on the making, if I could say. No? Uh, at the beginning, uh, this started uh, as a side project of our design practice as a as an studio taking commercial commissions to, to make mostly books. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> was like a, trying to find a way to have a, a space of practice outside any expectation, uh, limiting uh, as much as possible uh, <clears throat> all the, um, I don't know how, how to say this, uh, um, all the restrictions uh, about uh, publishing uh, in uh, being inside a, a context, an ecosystem like the Mexican one, no? Uh, there is like this formal way of, uh, of producing and most of our books are printed on house with a risograph uh, machine. <laughs> Uh, and um, was like this idea to 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 to, to try to find the shortest way to get into a book uh, in order to have a space to at the beginning just to 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 to, to make possible a design that we thought uh, we wanted to do and not finding the space to do this. Uh, on uh, our regular commercial practice. Um, uh, and, uh, and to erase uh, 
any expectation about that, no? Uh, and to erase everything that you don't need to get into a book, no? Uh, one uh, doing a, a lot of uh, <clears throat> renounces uh, in, in terms of uh, having a greater circulation, uh, fulfilling all the formal parts of a book, uh, just to getting uh, the essence of this, no? Um, and uh, everything that uh, came after was uh, an unexpected and very happy uh, finding on this, no? Um, um, <clears throat> somehow, uh, by saying this, of, uh, uh, of creating this uh, space, um, was about to being able to bring to the book form contents that otherwise would not be possible to get there. And um, somehow being attached uh, by this notion and idea, somehow like uh, this belief, uh, this militant belief that uh, the specific format of the book, as simple and as complex as, as it is, um, somehow was, is, uh, and a specific uh, language, uh, and a specific uh, semantic, and, um, <clears throat> and, and, and somehow that there was contents, ideas, arguments that can only be uh, enunciated uh, with this specific language, no? Um, and um, in a way or, or another, uh, we found uh, a possible model to do this uh, uh, by reducing uh, any expectation on this, just to, to mm -hmm. and somehow uh, uh, one finding on this was uh, that this idea to create a, a, a semi independent uh, initiative, uh, this is space of freedom. Uh, what we found is uh, this is space of uh, restrictions somehow. No, in order to make this possible, uh, what we needed to do is to attach to the simplest uh, possible way to operate. No, uh, to to fulfill this very money where this was possible, um, and then uh, that's how we found a. Uh, the many possibilities uh, of this uh, and, mm -hmm. and somehow also we learn uh, about the, 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 the cycle of, of the content. No? Uh, uh, somehow the, the, the performatic act of, uh, of doing this, uh, which uh, at the beginning was like the simulation of uh, let's play to make books, uh, uh, was not uh, the end uh, or the final goal of this, that uh, uh, somehow uh, uh, the, the other part of this is somehow the, the, the cycle that makes, uh, uh, that does the magic uh, which is attached to the book is uh, to, to find uh, the, 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 the response, the bounce, the mirror of a reader, no? And also uh, to being an enabler uh, to, to create this space uh, for all those ideas, voices, and authors uh, with this content expected to be transformed by this, no? Um, and uh, with toying, playing with this uh, uh, possibility and with the chance uh, usually denied for uh, a, a small project to publish a lot of titles, uh, more than making a lot of books or units, uh, we choose uh, this other path to, to, to publish a, a lot of books. Uh, and somehow attached to this idea to, 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 to stay on the simplest uh, possible um, methodology on this, no? Mm -hmm. 
uh, somehow by uh, working with a lot of limitations, um, we found that we were able and we had the capacity to make these very simple books, uh, the minimal version of this, no? And uh, most of our books, uh, mainly at the beginning of the process, were uh, uh, books about one single idea, one single argument, uh, one single line and logic uh, of developing unfolding into the book structure, no? And also, um, I think we found uh, somehow a way to, to reflect uh, uh, in a different manner um, what was happening uh, on our context on this uh, form. Uh, somehow, uh, printed matter and books are like um, when something ends up into a book, it's like a testing, a surviving on time. And, and usually, it's like this is space reserved for understanding things, to create memory about things. And, and somehow, by operating by this very simple model, uh, we found that we had the possibility to, to, to react to things going on around us with a more speed with uh, rapidly uh, bringing to the book form uh, arguments, reflection about what was happening around us uh, like this. And somehow we decided to make this uh, possibility somehow like a mission. Uh, um, uh, when I talk about uh, reflecting what was happening around us was mainly uh, uh, our concern about what was happening, what has been happening in our country over the last years, uh, of uh, where a lot of uh, violence uh, and uh, instability uh, uh, started to dominate the public life of our country, and and, and somehow uh, this sense of responsibility about uh, uh, how to react about uh, about this, uh, we found that. Uh, what we could do is doing this job of, of, of uh, making books, talking about this immediately, and, and, and somehow fulfilling this possibility of the book, uh, uh, not only as this receipt. Uh, uh, there is this idea that uh, <coughs> a, a book is, 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 is the main, uh, the core space where it, someone can find a transparency where that's the place where you go to understand uh, on depth uh, subjects and things and ideas uh, and what we wanted to do is somehow to subvert this uh, and uh, to, to, to create artifacts that uh, reflect, uh, reflect confusion and reflect uh, uh, complexity and uh, um, somehow create this memory, this argument about, uh, about this, no? And also like um, being aware of the, of the, of the contradictions uh, of this uh, practice and this way of publishing in terms of uh, maybe on some of the books that we have published, we are doing like, a, or our authors are doing, important and grave and serious denounces about uh, things going on, but uh, with the very limitations of, uh, of the small run editions, no? Um, and uh, also um, somehow by, by having this possibility to, <coughs> to, 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 to publish a lot on variety and diversity of titles, somehow to understand that our role, if any, as creators of content is about uh, this conjunto, uh, uh, this uh, bricolage of different items that somehow uh, being together on the same catalog 
uh, were like a way of uh, conversation, like a, a way to, to contaminate different contents um, in relation uh, with their neighbors on our catalog, no? Something like this. And I suppose that's what uh, you saw on our project. Um, I don't know, Andrea, if you want to add something about that. Microphone. Andrea, you, your, Andrea, Andrea. Andrea, you're muted. Sorry. Hello. So I was, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was trying to share a presentation, but I don't know, like, if you could, like, actually, like, watch it That's while great. Leon was, like, talking. But um, I think, yes, I, I would love to add that it is, it is really amazing regarding to the design process of these books that um, you are really used to develop uh, when you are a designer, you know, like very functional and beautiful things out there. And sometimes you can forget for, uh, about the content and I think something really important for me as a designer working with Gato Negro is been the possibility and the constant learning of uh, don't losing the content out of sight. You know, like really, as Leon said, with this uh, specific rules and this set of, I wouldn't say limitations. I think call it like, like I would call it like guidelines. Uh, you can access to this content in a more uh, practical and powerful way. Uh, at the end, it, sometimes, I don't know, when, when I'm looking through all the catalog that we have published, uh, I can see how, the, how this set of guidelines has been able to provide a really powerful and unique way of um, communicating each specific project. So it's really interesting if you try to see the design as a tool, not just as a way of producing things. Um, but yeah, I think that's something that I was thinking where you were talking. Um, I don't know if we and, should. Uh, and Something that has been surprising and interesting for us is that uh, uh, that somehow how this idea of uh, the, <clears throat> well, that's that was like a recognition in the making. Uh, I don't know how it is in some other places, but here at least on the Mexican content uh, context where we learn to to, to to do this uh, on the bookmaking process, the role of the design is a minor one. Uh, usually a subsidiary of the author and the publisher. Uh, and uh, somehow by starting to recognize, no, this at the beginning is a design project, uh, mm -hmm. was like this, I don't know the exact word in English, but uh, this shameful place to start, no? And, uh, <coughs> and, uh, it's been uh, took a time to recognize this, recognize this uh, uh, that somehow uh, by crafting this tool from the design perspective uh, and uh, crafting this um, space with some set of rules, very specific, some of them very simple, like uh, we only work with uh, four formats. Uh, we only mainly uh, most of our work books are with one ink. Um, we only use one or two or three papers. 
we only use a, as a base one typography. A, so somehow a, all this was a, a design choices. A, for example, this idea on the design of the design of the pages that only one thing happens there, a, nothing else. A, this idea that a, so somehow it's not the, it's the content king here. A, somehow by adding all those limitations you end up creating a space with a lot of freedom as i said no somehow uh, by reducing you have the luxury to have uh, possibilities to bring into the book form contents that otherwise would not be possible fulfilling the usual expectations that a book should have no um, and also recognize happily recognize that somehow we are doing the trick uh, this idea to to to, to hide uh, 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 how important this set of restriction it is on the the way the content is formed no um, and and also recognize that uh, first came the idea of uh, we would like to book to make books like this and then we expected for the content to do uh, to, to perform the, that idea, no? And um, and I don't know that that, that was uh, that's how this is. Uh, it, it, that is something that we learn through the making. I mean, at, at the beginning, it wasn't as certain as that. I mean, um, I, yeah. I think at some point it started to work it that way, and then we figure it out this sort of mechanism for for do the conceptual thing about, yeah, we have like this set of rules and limitations or guidelines and then waiting for the content to, to match this, this, this kind of structure. And then maybe now seven years later, we kind of figured out how to editing and how to, to realize that kind of, of formula. But at the beginning, it wasn't like that. Um, I'm showing you some books while you're speaking. <laughs> uh, maybe we could illustrate this idea with, uh, for example, that specific title, no? Uh, I can show you this through my screen again. The body that is not there. Give me a moment. You can start to talk about the project. I'm just going to search for the PDF right uh, here. For example, that book uh, that Andrea has in hand, Cuerpo que no está, is something that could be translated as uh, body that is not here. Not here. There. Um, that book, um, we present this, uh, this book as uh, what should be a poetry book. But what it is, uh, is a list of uh, causes of death. Uh, are about uh, 14,000 uh, causes of death uh, organized by type uh, uh, in between infections, diseases, and accidents. And uh, all this uh, list is organized with a code. Uh, this is an actual uh, list created what would be the Secretary of Health of Mexico. Mm -hmm. And uh, this list is used when uh, a certificate of death uh, is, uh, is made. Uh, as, uh, so here when you die, they, they write this kind of code or number in your certificate. There's thousands. Uh, uh, by itself, uh, reading this list, is like a morbid, interesting pleasure to learn all the possibilities of how you and why you, you could die of. You could uh, die of. <laughs> but there is like a, a context uh, where we think this makes a, a compelling sense, which is uh, <clears throat> this uh, list 
was provided uh, to us by an organization of mothers of, uh, 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 searching for uh, uh, disappeared people, uh, missing persons, uh, which is one of those horrible problems we this country has faced over the last years where people disappear, mainly for reasons related to uh, violence, uh, narco related violence, for the political reasons, uh, and for the general state of impunity that rules on this country. And uh, uh, somehow uh, this organization used this list as part of uh, making a legal argument against the uh, uh, Mexican government um, that uh, somehow for the all those missing persons, uh, even that last right uh, to have a cause of death was denied. No? Somehow uh, to the point that uh, uh, even uh, having this uh, last uh, uh, closure, no? legacy of life was denied, no? and uh, that uh, made the point that there was no way of closure in the history of a person, of a missing person, without having that single mm -hmm. number, that code, and to have a death certificate. And, uh, and somehow the book is about to make this very simple, but uh, at the same time, complex uh, point about situation. Uh, it doesn't, uh, as a denunciation, it's just, just make a, a, a point there, no? And the, the book uh, is, uh, the books are about uh, 500 pages or something like that, and has this, this sense of a Bible, of a legal code or something like that, uh, but by itself, we would like to think that we making this object that uh, uh, which is complex, and somehow it's a way to to, to deal and face with uh, uh, with this uh, situation. And as I said, it's a tool to 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 to, to create a memory about this complexity, no? And. Uh, that's like an, uh, an example of that, no? Um, maybe uh, we could <clears throat> show you um, the collection uh, La Pampa del Infierno. Can you show Andrea, please? Uh, yes. That he... Give me a moment, but yes, I think I have some. Um, um, what we're going to show, it's like a small series of uh, photo books. Uh, like, <clears throat> as I said at the beginning, when we started to, 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 when we realized that we had the chance to create like a catalog and to somehow organize all those interests and possibilities uh, of publications, we started to publish uh, photo books. Uh, uh, somehow also attached and taking advantage of the limitation of the technology that we were using, like by printing with this RISO machine that uh, uh, for the ones familiar with this technology, uh, it's a long uh, uh, collection of limitations. Most of the things that uh, the possibilities of the printed matter and publications are things that the resource doesn't do well. But there are one or two things that uh, the resource does well, and we decided to get attached to, to that. No? And that's how we started to publish photographs, starting by this very simple thing that uh, publish one ink uh, black and white photographs with a lot of contrast. Uh, somehow, only that, and, and also like uh, uh, attaching or, or, or facing some, something very usual, at least in Mexico or Latin American context, where there's a lot of uh, photo book projects that uh, usually face uh, uh, that um, 
again, like the, 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 the final realization uh, of a project of photographs is end up with a, with a photo book. And somehow uh, the economy of uh, what a photo book uh, has to be usually is impossible for most of the photographers uh, working uh, here on Latin America, but everywhere. It's, uh, it's expensive and it's difficult to end up with a proper photo book uh, usually this promise of this uh, coffee table with glossy full color book, no? And uh, somehow we started to do photo books, trying to maybe make the point that it's possible to, to, this, to, do, to do this on a different way, no? Yeah, and, um, uh, somehow th this collection uh, um, was about uh, to make very simple um, pocket size photo books made uh, by appropriation, images taken from uh, uh, some place. Uh, si se puede ver? Can we see that? I'm just give me just one minute. I'm almost there. Um, <clears throat> Uh, that we're about to somehow make uh, a point about uh, the political uh, poignant uh, issues uh, in, in Mexico or in Latin America, no? Um, for example, this is a book, uh, PM. Uh, can we see the cover, Andrea? Um, or, or the page two, okay. The what? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, but let's start with the PM. PM, okay. Okay, uh, this book, uh, the author is a Mexican artist and curator, Alejandro Luperca Morales. He was born and raised in Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, uh, which is the city uh, of Mexico at the border with the States, with Texas. Uh, Juarez is in front of uh, El Paso. El Paso, uh -huh. And uh, uh, Juarez is a, it's a big city of one million and a half uh, habitants, people living there. And uh, uh, Juarez was uh, one of the worst places uh, of violence uh, here. Uh, there is a long story about uh, the city and the relation with the states and the economic relation with the states. Uh, but uh, like since 12 years ago, uh, Juarez became one of the most violent uh, cities in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Alejandro uh, was living there as a very young student when all this violence uh, sourced. Uh, and what he did for many years was uh, to collect uh, pictures taken from one newspaper, uh, the newspaper titled PM, like uh, AM PM, it was a vespertine tabloid, something that would be on the States, I don't know, uh, the National Empire or something like that, uh, uh, that journalistic news that uh, somehow was they were very eager and happy to show all this violence, uh, uh, to, 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 to show uh, and to cover extensively every day, every act of violence, every murder, and to photograph uh, and show at the paper uh, pictures of dead people, of, uh, of uh, people who was assassinated. And what Alejandro did uh, for many years was to collect uh, all those pictures, to them, 
And what he did was this process to erase the dead bodies with the rubber gun to, to somehow to intervene those images, those terrible images, by this gentle and careful act of erase the dead bodies and just uh, show uh, the, 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 the scenes of what happened here and, and, and to, to show about this vacuum, this uh, empty space uh, where things happened. No? And uh, the book uh, shows just a part of that huge collection that uh, Alejandro has made, uh, that, which is also part of a bigger uh, artistic project about this. And um, to counterpoint this, all those uh, terrible but strange images, with uh, some um, <coughs> excerpts of the same newspaper. Can you show Andrea the... the, the, the la muerte, like this. Like no? this. Uh, what he did is a, like another layer of, uh, of complexity and, uh, uh, and an unnerving thing going on there is that on the classified uh, section of this newspaper used to appear from time to time uh, those messages where some anonymous voice thanks to the holy dead uh, for the favor uh, received and uh, like this pray to the holy dead thanks to the holy dead for the favor i received and usually uh, those kinds of, uh, of um, messages uh, were made by murderers somehow uh, thanking because the, 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 the job uh, was done, no? Was the hitman? Done, like the hitman, exactly. So somehow what happened for many years at these newspapers that you had uh, the picture of a dead body and the thinking uh, of so of the people who did this and the executions uh, uh, and somehow the, the book uh, only places all uh, these two messages and images together uh, and again uh, somehow uh, this book is about to 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 to, to reflect uh, and to, to show what was happening there uh, and again to, 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 to name and to, to, to show this tragic uh, complexity no? uh, and somehow to, to book, it's like a big uh, question and it's only that. No? Uh, for example, we also could show, uh, can you open the souvenir, Andrea? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Give me a moment. And uh, yeah. as I said, so, somehow uh, what we think is uh, uh, this space of possibility is to, 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 to create this uh, complex objects and complex uh, arguments and maybe somehow that's where some radicality some people uh, see on our work. Uh, can, you part of, uh, um? can you see the souvenir one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you show the next page? Yes. Uh, this book is part of the same series, uh, uh, Souvenir. The, author of this book is Guillermo Weiss, which is uh, an Argentinian photographer. And the tale that this book uh, uh, shows is a very specific one, but uh, who also unfolds uh, a more universal tale. Uh, can you go please to the first page? Uh, this book, uh, uh, the previous one, uh, is about a, a story that took place in Argentina, Argentina, uh, 25 years ago, where uh, this guy uh, on the page one of the book was the president of Argentina. That guy was uh, Carlos Saúl Menem, Menem, who 
somehow this guy was like a prequel of what would happen in the world uh, nowadays. This uh, charismatic and populistic uh, leader uh, who was a terrible person. For example, this picture was taken while, while he was uh, president and he was bragging about uh, his new red Ferrari that he, uh, he just bought or was a gift in front of the presidential house. It's like, uh, I don't know, the president of the United States showing to the press uh, his new car. Uh, that, that was the kind of president that Menem was. Uh, but also was a very popular president. Uh, and uh, when he was president, uh, he created a network, a clandestine ne network, uh, selling uh, armory guns to countries at war. Uh, mainly at that time was taking place the war at the Balkans, what was Yugoslavia, and uh, was a little war in between Ecuador and Peru. And uh, uh, Menem set up as a personal business <coughs> a network uh, of, uh, of selling uh, arms Sorry. to those countries. Um, this was uh, uh, new uh, because uh, on the year 95, uh, there was a huge explosion on a very small town of the countryside in Argentina. Uh, and what happened is that there was an arsenal of uh, weapons about to be cheated to their clients. And uh, the national policy of uh, Argentina found this plot of, uh, of, of uh, selling weapons. And they were about to, 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 to discover this. And what Menem did was to intentionally explode uh, the arsenal. And that was a terrific and tragic event, uh, like um, tens of people died there. And uh, at the, after this, and for many years, this small town and the streets of this small town were full of, uh, of rest of the explosion. Esquirlas is the name in Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what um, <coughs> Guillermo did was um, a similar exercise of, 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 of collection of an appropriation to, to, to collect all, all those pieces and photograph them with this very white background, clean way, uh, like, a, like the, the, the identity the, the, of, of, of uh, his hometown was this, uh, this, the, 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 this terrible uh, souvenirs of that tragic event uh, that took place. No? Like a testimony, uh, no? Also. Uh, but the book does, uh, the text that goes with, uh, 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 with, the, with the images, it's like uh, telling this story as a fairy tale, like uh, explaining what happened there, uh, somehow making a, uh, trying to resemble like this fairy tale <coughs> for children, no? Something uh, <coughs> like that. And, uh, also, like this book is like a, some trying to find a way, a tangential, una manera tangential, to mm. talk about uh, and to denounce this terrible situation uh, about uh, uh, those pieces of of, uh, of the brilliant robber, no? Uh, and maybe we could show a uh, Nochistlan. Mm -hmm. Okay, this book is part of the same series. <coughs> uh, this is uh, also a Mexican tale about abuse of power and uh, uh, 
Can you show the first page of the book, Andrea? Okay, uh, this is a, a, a real picture. A beautiful book. Uh, that is there, uh, used to be the president of Mexico, Enrique Peña Nieto. Uh, his term as president was in between 2012 and 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, this book, the author is, um, can you show the next page? Is Rigoberto Diaz Luján, which is a Mexican photographer and artist. Rigoberto is from Oaxaca, <coughs> which is this state of Mexico of the south. Uh, Oaxaca is a very particular uh, state place uh, with a, a huge, uh, a huge part of the population is indigenous from very diverse uh, ethnic groups uh, and with a lot of poverty. And uh, what this book uh, depicts was also <coughs> some images are appropriated from somewhere else. And uh, what it's about is that Rigoberto found a, a manual of the Mexican Federal Police, Manual de Técnicas de Uso de la Fuerza, a manual of techniques of use of force, can you uh, create it to, to, to teach uh, police officers about how to deal and, uh, and how to dissolve uh, uh, public uh, manifestations and protests? Okay, can you go down? Yes, of course. Uh, so uh, uh, the book, uh, uh, those pictures are real, taken from this manual that uh, with some patients you can find online, uh, showing the, the, the evolution of uh, degrees of how to use the force to uh, dissolve and end a uh, public protest. No? Can you go? Uh, going uh, through levels of, of uh, risk to the officers and how to deal with the protester. No? Um, and the, uh, uh, so the, the books are like an addition of those set of pictures and uh, choosing some excerpts of, of the manual that where you start with uh, how to, 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 to handle with your, to, to, stop someone with your hands to use a, a, an automatic rifle. No? And the, the last uh, pages of the book are showing real pictures of how the police end up uh, dealing with the protest. And this was a, 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 a real situation that- Two years ago, no? Five years ago in Oaxaca, like five years, in this uh, location called Nochixtlan, where there was uh, a strike of uh, teachers, of elementary school teachers, that was uh, attacked by the, the police, the same one who received this, uh, this training uh, very violently. And uh, uh, also a handful of uh, protesters were shot and dead. And, um, and also, uh, did you remember like in the news, they were lying? Like they were avoid, avoiding talking about this on the press. Like, I don't know, the police department and national security, I would say that they start to, to tell like, no, these pictures are fake. Like we didn't use a single, like a single bullet wasn't shot. I remember like that kind of statement. If you can uh, uh, show the last page of the book, which is, which is like this, no? Like the, you can see there the, the level of uh, brutality and violence that took place there, no? And again, uh, the book is this exercise of appropriation and to, to somehow creating this idea of the third image when you put together two different images from two different contexts, you create a third one, uh, which is the argument of this. And and the the the, the, the intention with this book is the same, no? Like the this very simple compilation of images and, uh, and somehow the, the very sharp uh, denounce that the book uh, can make, no? 
Uh, and finally, of this series, we, we could show uh, Enrique. Yes, just give me a moment because I have to set it up. A moment, please. Mm -hmm. Let, let's go quickly with Enrique Andrea and then to go to the killer. So, in the middle register. Yeah, I'm just having some trouble opening it, so give it's me a second. There, no? Okay. Um, the thing is in my in my computer is really strange because I cannot like see the whole screen. I don't know what's happening. It's right here. Okay, I have it. Okay, this is uh, uh, this book is part of the same series. Uh, the author of this book is Alejandro Cartagena, which is a Mexican photographer based on Monterrey. Uh, Alejandro has a successful and prolific uh, career. Uh, and um, this is also an appropriation exercise. And uh, uh, you only have two pages there, Andrea. Yes, uh, I know. Uh, or maybe with that is enough. Uh, the, this book uh, is about uh, the same guy you saw on the first page of the Nochislan book, which was the president of Mexico, Enrique Peña Nieto, uh, that was essentially an asshole. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> with a lot of vanity, let's say. And uh, what uh, this guy, Enrique, loved the most was to do selfies. <laughs> taking selfies of himself. Uh, with people, usually in gatherings, uh, by being president, a part of the performance of being him was take a, a selfie, uh, usually with women. Uh, there was this story uh, believed by himself and by a lot of people, enabled by the media of this country, that he was a very handsome man, and uh, he loved to do selfies, uh, usually with women. Uh, and indeed. Uh, while his term as president at the official web page of the Mexican presidency was a section dedicated to uh, selfies of, uh, of the president uh, with people, no? Per and, day, no? Yeah. It was almost like per day. Yeah, and what, uh, what uh, Alejandro did is once again uh, to collect those images uh, and to mix uh, the, the images with headlines taken from uh, news media, from newspapers, uh, about uh, how horrible and failed was his government. Maybe most of the people seeing this uh, doesn't read Spanish, but... Uh, Here's one. For example, kids sick of cancer, received a uh, fake chemius during the Duarte's government in Veracruz, which is uh, well, this the was governor. That a, a, a governor from the state of Mexico, very close to Peña Nieto, was a very corrupt person to the level to steal the money dedicated to- uh, Medicine and treatment. With cancer. So you have this horrible news, and then you have Mr. Peña Nieto doing selfies uh, the idea at the beginning, I can tell you this, was to uh, to match headlines from the same day of the selfie. At the end, was very difficult, but somehow makes very simply the point of uh, how asshole this guy was, no? And uh, his government, no, it was his, his whole network of evilness and corruption, uh, and uh, covered with this. Uh, show thing of vanity of this guy. No? And for example, this small series is an ongoing project. Uh, th those books were published uh, 
uh, two or three years ago, uh, but uh, we have um, the intention and we have uh, on hold uh, a set of new titles doing this exercise of by uh, those uh, uh, um, approaches of uh, 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 appropriation of images taken from some other place to, uh, to tangle, to, 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 to make uh, these arguments showing uh, abuse of power in the Latin American context, no? Uh, and maybe we, we could show uh, one project that, uh, took the attention, that took the attention of the of the program of the CCA that uh, what is one of the of the last publications, which is the uh, Imprimir is Resistir. Yeah. Just for that one, can you show like the physical book? Because the way we printed this book actually was really randomly. I mean, there is not like one single design file for this. We started just to print each poster at the time. And so I'm going to show you some of the plates, but there is not like one single like printing file final archive. So give me just. Okay. Uh, the, the story about this publication uh, started one year ago, uh, when, as you may know, there was a Despertar social. moment of a huge social conflict in Chile. Uh, which is this country of South America, uh, uh, started uh, with an increase of the tariffs of public transportation. Uh, that uh, uh, the response of this was a huge social protest that somehow was that, that increase on, on the tariffs of transportation was the tipping point of a series of measures, uh, very un unpopular. Uh, and the tipping point of a long term boiling of so social unrest there. Uh, Chile has a, a complex history of uh, authoritarianism. Uh, during almost 30 years, there was this dictatorship by Augusto Pinochet, a brutal and horrible dictatorship that somehow, even though Chile was considered like a democracy, uh, the constitution and the laws there were uh, 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 created by uh, the heroes of that dictatorship. And uh, there was this uh, uh, uprising of a lot of protests that were followed by a brutal repression by police there. And <coughs> uh, one of the responses to this for, uh, uh, for the population uh, 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 protesting, mainly for young people, was uh, like this explosion of, uh, of of, of uh, political graphics uh, protesting. Uh, at some moment, this took place uh, almost a year ago, the streets of Santiago de Chile, which is Chile, were uh, covered with the, all the, the, those uh, graphics. Uh, created very quickly uh, with a sense of urgency uh, 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 and uh, as a way to self-protest, to pro protect. Uh, when a moment that was really dangerous to, to go to the streets to protest, somehow to occupy the streets uh, with this uh, became a, 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 as, a, as a very important way to, to show discontent and, uh, and to make testimony of this. No? Uh, <clears throat> when this took place, uh, we were aware of the situation and also many friends of ours uh, on this publication world were participating uh, very actively on this. <coughs> and uh, um, again, like <coughs> by trying to, to somehow reflect what's going on there, uh, we contacted uh, some friends of us, specifically, there was, there is in Santiago, uh, an art book fair, impresionante. And the guys who organized this fair are good friends of us, and they started to collect <coughs> all those graphics. Uh, um, and uh, at some moment, uh, we started a conversation with them uh, about the possibility to make a publication with this. Uh, also, we collected another uh, group of friends of us, which is a <coughs> 
a collective of uh, young artists and publishers. Uh, now they call themselves Ambre, 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 like hungry, 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 that also create very organically uh, uh, workshops to create uh, all these uh, graphics to resist uh, what was going on there. Uh, so very quickly, we collected uh, <coughs> these groups, uh, this set of, uh, of images, uh, which has a, uh, the origin of this. Uh, it's a lot of collectives and individuals who started to do this. And uh, <coughs> we made uh, this publication that you saw. No, uh, 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 and somehow was we found there like, like the same tool uh, uh, to, to somehow to to spread this content, which is very compelling to us and, and is compelling in, in 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 a country like Mexico to 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 to, to give visibility to what was happening there but also to somehow by putting this out of the street and into the printed page to start to create a somehow of memory or a space where those images can be preserved and can be read and understood on a different level. No? Uh, and also by doing the, the simplest uh, uh, procedure to, to do this, uh, which is some or most of those images were in color or uh, or different, but to, to simplify this to one single link and, uh, and uh, publishing this in a very, very simple format as a tabloid size glued on the spine uh, to potentially to unfold this and to, to recreate somewhere else uh, uh, those wall, walls uh, on Santiago de Chile. No? Uh, and this is one of our last uh, projects uh, where somehow, uh, as I said at the beginning, this has been a learning on the making. So somehow approaching to this uh, thing and making this publication possible was about to, to put uh, on practice this learning to, to, to how we could do this. Uh, and also to inhabitate the same contradiction of uh, uh, at the end, we were able to print only a hundred copies of this. Uh, so it's not like <coughs> creating a massive uh, tool of dispersion of this content, but creating this way of uh, preserve uh, this content and put value on these kind of images originally made with a lot of sense of urgency and um, and uh, I forgot the word. Uh, this is another project. Uh, I don't know how, what are we doing on time? Uh, if it makes sense to you to open this conversation to more people. Yeah, I, I think we could uh, transition to Q&A if y'all are comfortable with it. While we're waiting for some questions to come in, can I actually start with a question? Um, it's about specifically kind of Chile 2019. And, um, you know, we've had some conversations about the, the risograph as being such a great way to get information out quickly. And in the times since um, our exhibition was put together, you know, we've, we've kind of all been inside because of the pandemic for, for I don't know how long it's been, months. So I was wondering um, in terms of distribution, if you're still thinking about the printed form as the best way to have um, text and, and ideas and images circulate. Um, yeah, like what, how you're viewing the role of, of the printed book of printed matter um, as a form of, of resistance, you know, right now in this moment. I would say um, yes. Uh, first, for one simple and practical reason, is that uh, the only thing that we can do well. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, and yes, uh, for those for us, those times has been very challenging in terms that somehow the, all this lockdown and restriction uh, uh, without circulation. 
what we do uh, acquires a different uh, reality, let's say. But um, I would say that yes, obviously, in the sense of uh, this idea or this notion that we are very attached to, that uh, uh, printed matter and books specifically are and specific languages language which is not transferable and somehow a uh, long time ago are uh, are not the best way to disseminate a lot of information but still is the best way or the most proper or the only one uh, for some given content to exist and to be there and to be memory and to be legacy and uh, and yes, and, and, and all, this is also as contradictory, and that's something that we assume in terms that uh, uh, somehow we, we create objects that has a very limited circulation, but uh, somehow uh, inhabitate the codes of uh, a tradition of circulation of that way, a tradition of circulation of radical content on that way, no? And it's, yeah, it's like a contradiction, but uh, I would say, yes, we are still on the business of publishing books. Maybe now it's more radical than before. We have a, another question about sort of disseminating your work in terms of how you fund your projects and how you then get them out into the world. You mentioned things like book fairs, but I think there's a larger question of like, how are you spreading these things once you've made them out into the world? And how are you making that happen? Um, well, yes, again, it, those uh, have been very challenging, challenging things for this. Uh, but <clears throat> it, 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 what we learned, uh, I say a, a lot of what we learned, but um, somehow the, the, the very conscious decision to step back to the formal established uh, way of the book industry forced you to, to find another ways to do this. And, uh, and, and somehow we found a uh, right wing uh, book fairs uh, as a, a very effective way to do that. Uh, and also because somehow by working with the small print runs, you are forced to, to go after your readers. No? And, and you have the, this chance, this privilege to, to somehow to choose your reader, no? Uh, and um, what uh, we did for many years intensively was to do a lot of this and also because by doing this mostly abroad uh, Mexico, uh, uh, we, we found like a, a network that was very rewarding to be there and, and, be, uh, and this multiplying effect of circulation was also very rewarding. And, and also somehow we choose to, to also to, 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 to deal with this contradiction to make circulate contents and materials uh, produced here on other spaces. Uh, and very specifically you know, on the States and in Europe, and to deal with this contradiction that somehow what we do, and it's very determined uh, because where we come from, and somehow we play the role of periphery in some of those places, and somehow we like it to, to reverse that situation or to deal with that situation. No? And uh, uh, on the... And we relied a lot on, on that way of, uh, of, of circulation uh, to, the, to the point that uh, something that we realize uh, this year. Year is that we don't have a, a proper uh, online oh, yeah. store. Uh, and that's something that now, we, now are, we have it. Now we have it. We are uh, <laughs> on that. Uh, but, yes. That's a reality. No, and, and, and also, as I said, very attached to this thing that. Uh, you have the luxury and the privilege to, to, to have a, to do the work to, to, to find a reader to, to, to what we do, no? And then, and on the financial and economic part of this, uh, 
nowadays it, it, it's, uh, it's becoming a problem. Uh, as I said uh, at the beginning, uh, this uh, project was like a side project of a design studio, somehow funded uh, by our by the economy of the, of the studio. No? Uh, lately, over the years, well, this has been like a snowball, and this operation is, uh, is uh, getting bigger and more complex. Uh, and, uh, and somehow, uh, um, the, uh, the, 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 the project is paid by itself. Almost. Almost on a level, which is on the, on the production level. The production. Uh, but only like the printing and distribution sometimes. But there's no, not like a profit. Uh, or design. Make a living by only doing this, no? Mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, part of the idea was to create this outfit, this possibility to publish stuff uh, being really independent, no? When I say about uh, uh, somehow the particularities of the Mexican independent publishing ecosystem is that uh, for a lot of reasons, there has been a long tradition of uh, state and public support for the arts and for the publishing industry in particular. Uh, and this somehow uh, has allowed the existence of a uh, interesting and complex and diverse uh, scene of uh, publishing here in Mexico, but very dependent on public money. And you have this contradiction of independent publishers that are very dependent of uh, receiving a grant, mm -hmm. receiving some kind of support, no? Uh, and somehow when we started this and um, was to make the point, we can do this, we can make this work and survive, without depending on that. And we can make a, a, a book with $100 and, uh, and to deliver content quickly, no? Uh, and also like book context, no? Like in Mexico, uh, having a book is a luxury, economically speaking. Uh, you know, like it's expensive, like for the average Mexican economy to buy a book. So there's a lot of layers here. Uh, but uh, Somehow, uh, uh, six months ago, we were on the process to 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 try to this to to make this operation like bigger and to, to, to face the, the 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 chance and the possibilities to to go into bigger projects and more ambitious circulation and so on. And now we don't know. Uh, uh, at some level. Uh, um, I feel this, and maybe Andrea shares this feeling that somehow, as we started, we were prepared for the worst in terms that uh, somehow we know how to do this with uh, very few resources. And maybe uh, the place where we're going to be in the immediate, in the near future, is going to be like that. No? Uh, uh, but yes. Over the last years, there was a more uh, 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 conflicting uh, uh, relation with this thing of going bigger. And, and, and somehow, uh, by making this operation to publish a lot of titles, at the end, uh, we built like the catalog of a mid size uh, publishing house. Uh, with the stocks and the re resources and the infrastructure of a minimal one, no. So this, um, uh, and for example, uh, 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 still now we can proudly say that we are aware that any book that we publish is going to be sold out at some moment soon uh, during its life. <laughs> but at the end, uh, uh, somehow there is no. No business model to that, no? Uh, or certainty. Like right now, we are on recession, you know, like the rest of the world. We are just trying to hold on and applying for a lot of things to. Uh, and now, something that we are doing is to apply and, and to look <laughs> for specific books to find what most of the people do, to, to trying to find a partner for some specific project, 
which was something that maybe a year ago we would not do. No? So that's uh, yeah, that makes perfect sense that things are constantly moving at this at this moment. Um, to shift a little bit, we have another question about um, some of the pieces that you showed, you referred to as part of a series. And so there's a question about whether you set out to do a series knowing that it's a series, knowing how many different books will be part of that series or what it will cover, or if that kind of comes about more organically, if that just sort of unfolds as it goes. Um, I would say that it's both. Um, uh, for example, <clears throat> with this series that we show, uh, like this idea, okay, like we have like here, like uh, some kind of methodology to, to replace this, as I said, this set of rules so by making this by appropriation. And, uh, and it's like to, to, to show the, the horrid spectacle of the politics in Latin America, you have plenty of subjects to, to, deal, to deal about. Uh, and, uh, and somehow at some moment when we realized that we have on the table different projects that were somehow related to this, uh, that's when we decided to make of this a series, no? <clears throat> uh, and also uh, somehow by doing this, you can work with authors, propose uh, books uh, with this. No, for example, now I can say this, uh, we are working on a, we're very excited about doing a, a little book uh, for this series with a, a designer from Venezuela, Ricardo Weiss, which is an amazing designer. Uh, and, and in this case, we went with Ricardo and said, would you like to make a book part of this series? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, <clears throat> it's been a slow process this year, but we are working on that and it's going to be, I'm uh, confident that a powerful and uh, conflicting uh, little baby book about uh, Venezuela, no? Uh, so, so just- sometimes, sometimes the titles comes together, no? Sometimes like we receive certain like pre-collections that we can assemble or thinking or editing in that way. Sometimes it's, it's been the other way around. Like we have these several titles and then we see, okay, maybe we can build a, co a collection out of this. The next time we have like a new proposal and then that's how we are building. Yeah, but, but this idea to, to, to somehow to create branches or families of books uh, 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 with a set of rules and etc. That's something that somehow has worked for us, no? And uh, for example, we could disclose with you uh, that now, now working on a new series uh, of books uh, to define finally how this is going to be and how it's going to be titled it's on the making, but it's uh, about non-creative writing, no? Uh, yeah, for example, uh, with the first book that we show, El Cuerpo que no está, it's somehow like an exercise of doing that, that of uh, uh, taking this appropriation process, but uh, with, uh, with words, uh, we have done some exercise like that, with this idea to, to if you put this on a book, you re-signify the content, and we say this is poetry, and uh, and now we are working with a lot more, with a lot of more intention, uh, with a series like that, that is going to be released uh, hopefully by uh, next year, and and that series is uh, with that intention. No, so somehow like as I said, like like the the, the, the career profile of this. That's something that we are uh, uh, working very closely with the set of authors uh, we invited for this, no? Specifically. Uh -huh. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. <laughs> um, maybe we'll just do one more question um, since we, we've been talking for some time.
time, but we have one question that maybe is either a straightforward answer or might be a little more complicated, but um, a question about how you settled on your primary typeface um, as opposed to other similar fonts. So how did you kind of come to your identity essentially um, since you do this, you know, sort of as Catherine was outlining that least amount of design possible. Therefore the choices of things like typeface actually become super interesting because it's something you is one of the few kind of design decisions. Um, we use uh, accidents grotesque. Uh, <clears throat> as I say, uh, 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 at the beginning, I don't know why. Or, or it was, <laughs> because you liked it. <laughs> uh, something, no, no, no. It was <laughs> something that maybe took place on the, the subconscious level, but uh, uh, now I have a good explanation of why we use accidents grotesque. That uh, um, somehow it's like a that genealogy of fonts, uh, the accents grotesque is like the elder part of the Helvetica, which is somehow like the, the standards of uh, how modern world will speak is Helvetica. No? So somehow it is neutral typography uh, and the uh, uh, accidents is like the previous version, which is somehow less perfect, less clear, less uh, uh, less polished, but somehow speaks this language of uh, neutrality, of, uh, of invisibility, but with a slight uh, point of uh, oddness of uh, something like that. Uh, yeah, that would be the answer. Which also has limits, no? For example, to compose uh, an entire book with accents grotesque and to deal with footnotes and uh, more complexity gets more complicated, no? Uh, uh, but yes, that, that was the, 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 the origin, no? It's um, neutral, invisible enough, but that somehow makes a, a glint uh, to, to this kind of uh, modern classic design with this idea that modern design has a, it's very rooted in some notion of a classy, classy C, but no, there is no word in English to that, but uh, to that, no, and with this idea that it's invisible, but somehow transmits some sense of authority or something like that, like you are not playing with that, no, you are not expressing anything through, type of, through typography, but only what is written there, no? some idea like that. Thank you. Coming from our, our like type oriented audience, I appreciate you going into the depth of that. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say thank you all. I think it's it's time, but thank you so much for for doing this event. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Leon. It's been just really fabulous. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Thanks, and, sir. Uh, uh, we want to quickly apologize. Maybe we started with a bumpy start, uh, but uh, it was because we were confused because the time changed here last weekend and we were expecting to do this one Two hour. hour. <laughs> so. That's why the presentation of the books was not so ready because we were about, Andrea and I, to work on that and an apology for that confusion. You all are heroic for rolling with it anyway. I so appreciate you. <laughs> It was fabulous and, and really like the, the material speaks for itself too. So it was just really such incredible work and such a treat to get to, to, to see it and hear, hear the depth behind it. It was really fabulous. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And hopefully someday soon. We, we will meet. meet. Yes, yes, that would be. Great, we would love to be able to like really, really host you at some point. Um, yeah, thanks again. Does anybody have any last things before we all sign off? All right, thank you so, so much. Okay, no, thank you. For have everything. a nice thank day. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Oh, and thanks to Chris Hamamoto again. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to thank, thank you, Chris Hamamoto, and uh, 
behind Chris. And the students from the CCA that make the connection to make this possible. Yes, you you please like go to the link of the exhibition. It's really amazing because we didn't speak about it, but you have this amazing tool where you can like generate one hundred and twenty-seven different manifestos. Something like that, yeah. Uh, and then you can have these new meanings. It's super crazy. It's really cool. <laughs> Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so much. Bye all. Bye.